that magnificent 2JZ GE VVTI. I might just be a dirt ball. I don't know who knows anymore. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Um, so you see, um, today we be doing a little bit of work on our IS300. Um, not a hundred percent sure what year this is, but all the first gen IS 300s pretty much had a 2J in the U.S. Um, you know, as most of us know, in other countries, there's the Altas and some come with beams engines. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, I'm draining the radiator fluid out of here because we're about to do the timing, uh, timing belt, water pump, and valve cover job on this, including the front uh, main seal and the, the camshaft seal. So that's what we'll be doing on this. Um, IS300, this is the homie Brandon's IS300. This is his daily driver. Um, Brandon is the owner of the LS400 that we see the 09 swap. Uh, almost, I think it's been like, it should have been like a year by now. Um, yeah, with the fish racing bell housing kit uh, on the LS400 turned out amazing. Car, car is insane, honestly. To be uh, one UZ stock, one UZ. Um, but this is like I said, this is his IS300. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna just pretty much um, just keep the camera, keep me take you guys along with me as I do this timing belt job on this. Um, it's real simple. Um, if you did this before, you already know. Um, but with a lot of people, they get the misconception and get you know a lot of misinformation fed to them throughout the different groups and all that on how to actually do the vvti timing gear this engine is an interference engine which means if you set the timing wrong you will bend the valves it will come into contact with the valves on the 2jz gte gte vvti those are not interference meaning you have a, a little bit more air gap between the valves and the pistons so that way you won't bend your valves if you slip timing or um touch the timing wrong the car just won't stop but on these if you set the timing wrong you will bend the valves on the ge so um like i said right now i'm just draining the radiator um draining the cooling out the radiator um we're gonna pull the radiator out we're not gonna take the bump or anything off the condense out all, all that stuff can stay in uh, we just need enough space just to get this cam the, the crankshaft bolt broke loose and we could get this show on the road and like i said I just take you guys with me as i do this let's go so I'll let you guys see it. it's real real super duper clean as brandon all the brandon cars usually is chrome factories pretty much like the ones i had on the gs but these are the is if you can see the difference in it how this sinks in more and then this doesn't sink in that much those are the gs ones and these are the is ones if anybody wonders the difference there's no real big difference to the eye but small difference but pretty much similar um so like I said, I'm draining the coolant. I don't think it's all the way done yet. He is going to need a new radiator. The radiator cap actually broke off, so um, I'm going to give him the radiator cap off the SC because I have a newer radiator cap coming in for the SC. There's nothing wrong with the radiator cap on the SC. It's just I'm upgrading. Anyway, so, um, yeah, like I said, this is the 2JZ GE VVTI 24 cam. Um, I already got the air box off. Got the radiator pretty much undone. We're going to go ahead and pull this out. And I'm gonna show you. Um, I'm gonna show you a real, real simple way to get this crankshaft bolt bo uh, broken loose. I'm not sure if I mentioned I did look in the door, and this is a 2002 IS 300. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm gonna get the crankshaft bolt bolt the crankshaft bolt broken loose, and I want to show you guys that quick trick. We might have to sit the car on the ground. Not 100 percent sure yet. So yeah, let's go and get this radiator out first. Um, when you're dealing with a cars, most of these cars. Uh, that I deal with, I try to put the the pretty much the bibs on, uh, so that way I won't mess anybody paint up. Cause this car is insanely clean. I know the camera probably won't show like the flicks and all that that's in the paint, but it's beautiful, bro. I'm not sure if this is factory paint or not, but it's it's clean. So forgot to get that center. Show you guys how I usually take the radiators out of these without making too much of a mess. So let's retain, you know, first time working on the TJ or IS or GS or SC. This is the upper radiator hose, lower radiator hose. This is the transmission lines. I'm not 100% sure which one is the feed and return, but let's just say this one is the feed. That's the return. Vice versa. Doesn't really honestly matter. Right now, why is off the car? When you go to put the hoses back on, this hose cannot reach to that port. This hose that goes to this one is shorter. That is the temperature sensor. Um, 
and this is the peacock this is how you drain it you just loosen it a little bit the way it will drain out this part if you loosen this too much and pull it out it will leak out this part and you will have a horrendous mess these part um these two right here go to the fans this is the controller fans this is the cooling floor uh cooling overflow this doesn't really do anything but when the radiator gets too much uh when you put too much fluid in the red coolant in the radiator and it's too much it just uh the therm the radiator cap actually has a spring that releases pretty much just opens up um internally and it allows the extra coolant to flow in here versus blow something apart or whatnot um so yeah tj is 300 radiator and i put these on here so that way because it is still um uh, transmission fluid in here so i just put these little vacuum caps on it so that way it doesn't leak but um if you were wondering why those black caps on this is an automatic if this was a manual um a lot of times when i do manual swaps we keep the uh, oem radiator from the, out the autos and just cap those off and just use the automatic radiator so this is what we have now like i said this is that one that i said this one cannot reach over there as you can see like i said i'm not sure which one is the feed and return but Transmission lines, lower radiator hose. Um, I have these hose clamps. I try to include a lot of these little tools in the description because those help you not make a mess. As you see, they're not leaking. There's a lot of debris down there just because um, this did have a shroud. There's just a lot of stuff stuck down there. So let's go ahead and get this crankshaft bolt uh, broken loose, and I'll show you guys what I usually do from here. All right, kids. So we go ahead and um, do a method called the bump start. Uh, if you watch a lot of my videos, you probably see me do this thing plenty of times. There's a high possibility that this will work. There's a slim possibility that it does not work. Um, if it doesn't work, we're going to have to just use another method. But this usually works. Um, so we go ahead and bump start it. I'll show you guys how I got it set up. For position references, I'm not sure how the camera is going to show up on, you know, on YouTube. So this is the driver's side with the brake cylinder there, what a brake booster there, passenger side battery. The breaker bar is leaning down towards the driver's side. Um, so what you're doing is pretty much you're turning the car. You're not turning the car on. I repeat, you are not turning the car on. The only thing you're doing is just bumping at the starter, bumping at the starter. And you're using the breaker bar um, and the weight of the car to actually break this bolt loose. I'm not 100% sure how tight this bolt is, so we're going to give it a shot. So let's see. Um, yes, you may be able to do this with the radiator in, but I choose to do it with the radiator out just in case that breaker bar decides to flip out somewhere. It doesn't bust the radiator open. So on it, literally, only thing you do. Yep, it's not working. It worked. Should have worked. Let's see. What oh, came off? Let's see if you got it. Broke loose. If not, we gotta try another method, guys. Let's see. Nope. It didn't break at least. So let me. So the second method that may work, we're gonna loop the belt around to make it hold tension even more. Hold on. Alright guys, so what we have here is the grizzly concoction. So if you look, uh we pretty much did away with the the serpentine belt tensioner and the power stirring pump. When you do this, do not put pressure on this power stirring pump because the air on the block that the power stirring bolt pump bus bolts to on the rear is very, very sensitive. So when you do this method, do not, I repeat, do not use the power stirring pump if you can not use it. So what I pretty much did was wrapped it around the water pump, alternator, and your AC compressor and pretty much just put all the extra belt slack on this side and you're going to bend it to the passenger side so i had a breaker bar and you want to use some type of extra breaker bar fortridge doohickey to get more tension on this thing so you can get as much pressure on this thing as possible to get it to break don't mind my my sweat towel so let's see what we got i heard it crack a little bit so hopefully it's actually about to break loose Whew. There you go. Um, this boat is like torque to like some crazy aircraft wheel torque spec. I can't remember the torque spec, but it's like up there in like the hundredths or some crazy stuff. So 
we got it broke loose. Oh man, we didn't break the breaker bar. I broke um a three eighths breaker bar doing this before. So word to the wise, use a half inch, not a three eighths. All right, guys. So we are at the point of the timing belt job where some of my some of our views will differentiate between you know the ones of us who do timing belts on a regular, the ones of us who seen info on the internet and this is the part that i actually wanted to do this to clear this up just a little bit so it actually we've shown you an example it will actually hit your brain and hit that light you know that little on a cartoon they bing oh okay and i'm going to explain this to you right now um so first off since toyota is the best brand superior brand ever they pretty much made this a fail-safe engine when you're doing the timing. And what I mean by fail-safe is they put literally a fail-safe in the play. So you have the timing dot and the timing slash on both can gears. This is the VVTI. This is the regular timing gear that's on the GE, it's usually on both sides. But this is the VVTI engine. This is the interference mode. And what I mean by they gave us a fail-safe where you pretty much can't really go wrong as long as you set it back up how you had it. Is because when you line these up with the dots and that mark right there that they I did not mark that this word I did not mark that okay this is before top dead center this is before your valves and this is pretty much before your pissing actually so say this is the top of the head and my hand is the pissing so this is about right here which are your number one pissing this is with all the pistons sitting down well below the wizard they will not come in contact with the valve stems that's what that dot is for i always use the dots um if you made a post on any social media and i chimed in i always use the dots i will not suggest anybody to use the slashes when it comes to this motor yes on the non vvti you use the slashes because we don't have dots on there unless somebody may have changed the timing gear or whatnot but always use the dots you will never go wrong when you use the dots because if you use the slashes and one of those slashes are off from the backing plate from the backing plate to the slash or whatnot on these timing gears it is a very very good chance when you go to start that vehicle that 2jz that magnificent 2jz ge vvti you will run the chance of bending valves and you will have to pull the whole engine out i'm telling you this so stern and so truly because i bent the valves on my gs 300 when i first got it how did I bend the valves? I used the slashes and it was off by a little bit and I didn't catch it. And when I started it, boom, that was it. It was done. That was years ago. That's when I first got pretty much my first VVTI and I bent the valves. I had to do the head job over and I learned the hard way. So I'm trying to put this info out so you guys won't go through what I had to go through, which is take the cylinder head off and change out the valves that you bent. So when, like I said, when you do it this way, it's a high possibility that this will this will actually go right for you guys. Um, if you have any second thoughts about if you're a top dead center before top dead center, just take the number one spark plug out. It's real, real simple. It's really, really simple. So without talking you guys' heads off, I'm going to show you the rest of the way how I do, how I do myself a timing belt on a 2JZ VVTI. So since these marks are pretty much already here, and they usually are always there on these, um, unless you know you spray too much brake cleaner and wipe them off, what I usually do is I already have it because um, I didn't take the uh, I didn't take the cover off, so I already have it here. Um, so I usually just put my own dot there, and my pen has ran dry, bro. So I usually put my dots there. Um, I'm using this for reference because you know just pretty much I'm showing you guys. Um, so I usually put my dots there and I usually mark my slash point here. Boom. Um, Cause a lot of times that is worn out really bad versus these. But since it's a, a 2002 and nobody has been in here before, it's fresh. So for me, that's Toyota's fail safe and that's my personal fail safe. And I'll show you a second fail safe to keep you from damaging your motor once we take everything off. So I'm gonna run down this real quick cause I'm gonna bust this thing off. I'm not trying to be out here all day. And I'm not really trying to rush the information, but. It's pretty much self-explanatory from this point forward, um, but I still walk you with me. All right, guys. So I took that lower cover off. So we have the upper cover that says the VVTI. Lower cover is a bolt here, bolt in the center, and there's an actual bolt here. You can't reach it unless you go through the power steering pump right there, um, which we have right here. That is a five millimeter um, Allen key uh, for the four 
Ellen heads at the top and the three at the bottom. So what you want to do next is, I believe this is the 12. You take that off with a 12. You want to bust this off with a 10 millimeter. These four bolts with a 10 mil because it is a um, timing belt cover bolt behind this that you won't be able to reach. Um, but you do have to pull the pulley pull off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bust this off, bust this off, and I'm going to show you how to pull the crankshaft pulley off. All right, before we go any further with pulling the pulley off, I'm going to show you guys what to do before you break that bolt loose. Like I was saying, line everything up with the dots. We have the dot to the back and pleat, dot to the back and pleat. The slashes are off to the side. Um, and we have the first slash to the zero mark, which you can't really see that good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean this off and make them, make them some fresh marks. So what I usually do, I break these bolts loose right now while it's tension on the timing belt because if you take this timing belt off and you go to break these bolts you run a chance of the camshaft actually spinning and coming into contact with the valves and you know the valves and the pistons get the kissing in there and you don't want that to happen so do this part of the job before you take the timing belt off before you even touch the timing belt tensioner which is you can't see it right now but it's still everything's still in time right now um and if you go to break these loose and you fear that you may have damaged something um, put a little bit of tension back on the timing gears and just rotate the engine 360. As long as it doesn't bind up, you're good to go. Um, I'm going to do it myself just because that's just usually what I always do. Um, just to make sure, you know, I didn't damage anything right now. Um, but yeah, so what you do, you want to have like a towel or like some, up oh, the bucket is slit. Yeah, now I'm going to slide the bucket over just. You want to have something to catch this oil because oil usually drains out of this. It may and it may not. It should. Yeah, see? Or you usually drains out of this. I really don't care about getting the timing cover wet or any of that stuff wet because I'm going to clean all that off. But if you don't have a drain pan or anything, you want to use like a, just go ahead, twist it out with like a cloth or something right there. And I'll just sit this off to the side. Okay, what I usually do before I actually break this and the bolt loose, I usually spray brake clean in there. I know some geniuses is going to come in the comments in this section and say, oh, why would you spray brake clean in your engine? Well, Brake clean is pretty much an alcohol-based fluid that when you spray it in a few seconds to a minute or two, it will dry. So spraying brake cleaning directly at this, it's not going to damage anything. If anything, it'll help clean it. Um, okay, geniuses. All right. Um, so spray it out. And the reason why you need to get this as clean and as dry as possible, because imagine sticking in this, uh, this hex key in here and twisting it and you stripping this. Now you have to drill this whole bolt out, pull this off. Hopefully you got enough uh, grip back there with a pad grip plies to get the rest of the bolt out of the camshaft. Now you just did a, a whole bunch of extra work for nothing. So let's dry that completely out. This bolt hole right here, it's going to still have oil right here regardless, no matter how much you spray. Eventually it'll dry out, but underneath this bolt because it comes through the back of the cam, uh, the back of the cam gear. Um, but as long as this bolt is actually dried out, it should be golden. And I found the correct one. I just grabbed the other one. Um, tools are a little mixed up because I have been building engines like back to back, so. So that's a 10 mil right there. Um, I will replace this probably after this job. I'm just going to order one because I don't like how that look. And this is not one of those jobs you want to go wrong. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I'm hitting everything with an impact because the impact actually just, boom, knocks it loose without actually using pressure to turn it. So if you have an impact, try to use the impact on these. All right. So I have it all loose. It's actually loose. So what I'm going to do, just what I usually do, just leave it in. Um, I'm going to put the other bolt over top so it stop dripping all everywhere. This bolt's bolt loose, but I'm going to just put it there, hand not even hand tight, just snug the bolt up against the cam gear. Um, because we're not taking this off yet. We just want those loose while we got the timing belt on. Um, and everything is still perfectly lined up. That's why I use the impact versus you know a hand tool. If you can help it, use an impact. If you don't have an impact and you use the hand tools, you're all going to have to take the valve covers off. I actually put like some vice grips or something on one of the camshafts and I really don't like doing that. So I have an impact. I, I got to leave you guys hanging on that part. I don't know what you're going to do if you don't have an impact. So I'm going to get everything set up so we can pull this crankshaft pulley off. All right, guys. So what we have here is a pulley puller. This is the only way you're going to get this pulley off. Uh, Pittsburgh's the brand. I got this from um, Harbor Freight. Um, you get it from pretty much any auto parts store, honestly. Um, so I have it already set up. Um, when you put these bolts in, it's two holes on opposite sides of the crank. Um, so what happens is 
I usually spray brake cleaning in the bolt holes so that way the bolts feed in real nice and smooth. Um, if they get to the bonding up while you're feeding them in, stop feeding them in and see why they're actually bonding because they should flow in smooth. Usually the problem is why they bind up on the way in is because it's just dirt in those holes. Just because, I mean, look at look at this mess that the cars usually have. And I've seen 10 times worse than this. This grit and everything that you're seeing here, this is nothing. I've seen 10 times worse. So what I usually do is I just spray a little bit of brake cleaner down here just to get the... um all the debris out of this so that way those bolts go in smooth these are 13 heads i believe this is a 14 but i'm not 100 percent sure right now so um we twist this in so what you want to do is and i'll show you when i pull it off because the angles on this thing is hard but that's why i didn't show you before i put it on all right so what this does is it bolts onto the crankshaft pulley this rod that goes in actually pushes onto the crankshaft and forces the pulley to pull off so we're going to go ahead and do it um I can't reach my gun in here, so I have to actually use a hand tool. But which is which is normal. Um, if I put a condenser in the front end off, I could hit hit it with a gun real easy. But it's all good. Got my trusty weird ratchet that I found at the parts pull spot. All right, and so what you do with this is that is a 14 mil I have on here. You just twist it to the right, bro. Just take your time. Um, this is actually coming off way easier than I thought it would have. Um, somebody may have actually been in here before. I'm not sure, but if not, we're about to get it straight now. Um, so as you see, um, not sure if you can act. you can see the gap, but it's actually pulling it off now. When you get to the end, you want to. I'm going to have to sit the camera down because it's going to actually drop down, and I don't want to damage this pulley. So should be at that point now. You see the gap behind it. I'm gonna go ahead and use my other hand to catch this thing. Um, I like using this ratchet just because it's so flat. Um, I can get this thing in and out a lot of. Real, real tight, awkward places. I actually use this on um uh, my neighbor's van when I was doing this tune-up just because it fits straight down into the engine bay. It's coming off super easy. So, should be. Yep, it's off. So, I'll show you guys. So, see how the, the little cylinder comes through and it actually pushes on the crankshaft pulley. The actual crankshaft to actually force the pulley itself off. Those are the two bolts. I usually feed the two bolts completely in until it hits the timing belt cover. You're here and they actually stop. Um, and pretty much that's what you got right there. Uh, Going to be a whole lot of cleaning because this is uh, oil from the, um, the timing gear. It's all good. So sit this off to the side for right now. And let's continue to disassemble this motor. Okay, so... Um, the lower timing belt cover are 10 mil bolts, so it's one here, one here. Like I said, you had to take the power stern pump pulley off. One here behind this power, mm, the water pump pulley. That bolt's behind the water pump pulley. This is the power stern pump wheel. Okay, I got you. You have to move this bracket out the way, so what I usually do, undo that one bolt completely. It's two bolts here. I usually loosen this one all the way up, and then I undo this one completely, and the bracket falls out the way so you can access that bolt right there. It's a bolt here and a bolt here, and the timing belt cover comes off, which is cool. Um, my cam gear is all off a little bit because I had to take the crankshaft pulley bolt off, but it's still in time. Um, and I'm going to double check before I take everything apart, just because why not? You might as well. Um, but we should be good to go. So I'm going to get this timing belt cover off and show you guys the next step, which is my number two pretty much fail safe. All right, so... Since we own the best cars in the world, <laughs> Toyota, um, I don't know if you can see it, but right there, that is called a belt stay or like a belt stop. But that actually keeps the belt from wobbling any more than it actually should to the left and right actually coming off time. Um, that just lets you know how serious this VVTI is. Just saying, just saying. So what you want to do now from here is, I don't know if you can see it or not, but right here on this actual tooth, it's a dot there right here i uh, can't get the camera to get it right there i know you might be able to see it now there's a dot right there so what you want to do is make sure that this dot is lined up with that back that dot right here on the oil pump uh, try to get it clean some uh, 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 uh. so this right here this tooth you can actually put a mark here if you're afraid you're going to forget but that dot right there to the backing plate not this actual timing gear tooth but this actual tooth right here on the crankshaft pulley, on the timing gear pulley, this right here, that dot lines up with that dot. And now it's going to all make sense why I said that light's going to blink in your head. 
that's a dot there back and pleat and dot to the back and pleat now that right there is my go-to for well that's actually my first fail safe when i'm putting it back together it's my second fail safe when i'm putting taking it apart but you get the just you get the just guys um so yeah guys that's pretty much how you make sure you stay in time while you're disassembling this thing um now um you can either a try to squeeze down behind the alternator is a bolt here on the tensioner and on the other side of this bolt back here is another bolt those are like i think those are 12 mils you can either a get those with the alternator on me i usually just take that top bolt out let the alternator flop over and it's real real easy to get to you take this off um this is the pulley for the timing and when you go to take this timing gear off you know to get to the front main sill you're gonna have to take this off because if you don't take this off you run a risk of breaking the tooth and your car just won't start and you'll be wondering oh man my car won't start whole time is just the timing gear it's nothing wrong with your engine i've seen that plenty of times so i'm going to go ahead get everything disassembled um disassemble everything show you guys how everything looks disassembled and we should be good to go um all right guys so pretty much got everything undone um i'm done with the car for today because i actually had to um pressure wash everything off to get this thing cleaned up before i assemble it so what i usually do i disassemble like today pressure wash it off and then tomorrow just throw everything back on so this will be um a two-part video and i apologize to the people um who actually want to see this in like one go so that's one of the main reasons why i'm doing it in two goes because i gotta let it dry and it's a two-part video also because this is to actually help people who are in the middle of doing a time belt job and who are going to be doing a time belt job so the guys who are doing a time belt job and got hung up in the middle somewhere and need more information the second part is for you guys and the first and second part is for you guys who actually is going to do this um so i'm gonna show you guys how everything looks once it's completely disassembled all right um so i still have all the gears on um you will use the pulley puller again so you take this bolt out use the pulley puller again to actually get the timing gear off and is a front main seal is behind there um and the two camshaft seals are behind here so these are already still loosened up i just pull these off pull this back and plate off which is held on by one two three four uh these 10 mil um bolts pull it back and plate off um and attend to those uh camshaft seals and pull the water pump off also so the rest of this is pretty much self-explanatory so what i usually do is i'll change the water pump out um well change the pull the water pump off pressure wash everything um clean everything up let it sit and dry and come back the next day and assemble it so this is pretty much what you're left with when you disassemble it as far as valve covers we are doing the valve covers but i'm not going to put it in this video to make it you know because it's going to just make the video longer than it actually should so i'm gonna go ahead um get this water pump off pressure wash everything off and let this bad boy sit overnight and dry and come back out and assemble it in the morning um so like i said uh so like i said i do apologize for anybody who wanted to see all the work done in one video i just don't want to make this video crazy long for no reason especially when people are further into the job than the next person as far as putting information out there um this is not to shoot anybody in the foot or just prove that you know anybody is right or wrong this is pretty much my half of doing the timing belt on the 2jz vvti 2jz ge vvti um engine pretty much the right way the proper way um and reason why i call it the proper way is because this will work Every time I do these timing jobs this way, this does work. I never had an issue unless it was already an existing issue there. Um, as long as you use um, OEM standard parts, either um, a, I might say this wrong, ASIN, A-I-S-I-N, ASIN brand, which is pretty much Toyota's OEM brand, or Gates. I have a lot of Gates parts as far as my timing belt um, parts go on the SC300. Um, there's a bunch of videos on there with the TJZ GE non-VVTI engine. That's another reason why I, don't want, I wanted to put some um, content out with the VVTI because I do have the non-VVTI um, engine all down in the videos. If you watch the channel, you already know. Um, so, yeah, like I said, this is not to say, you know, anybody's right or wrong. This is pretty much to show you more so the proper way to do it. If you follow these steps, each step I showed you, if you follow these steps, your car will be okay. Your car will be perfect. Um, in the next video, I will show how the sales actually supposed to sit. Because I see a lot of people asking, um, 
if they have the seals um, installed properly as far as flush with the engine and flush with the timing belt, uh, as flush flush with the oil pump. And in the next video, you'll understand it. So as far as assembling wise, we're not going to put anything new on here. I'm actually about to pull the water pump off and just hold this thing down and um, let it just dry up. And the reason why I do the water pump off is because the water pump is going to leak coolant. If water gets into the engine via the water ports, it's okay. It's, it's, it's okay. It's going to drain out. It's going to dry out. As long as you follow these steps, bro, you'll be peachy. Um, like I said, I don't know how many VVTIs I've done, so I don't even got to count on how many successful ones. I could count one six, unsuccessful one, which was the GS, the, the GS300, which is right there. It's kind of blared out. Um, but yeah, guys, all in all, um, I thank everybody for subscribing to the channel, man. I'm going to keep trying to put out good content for you guys. I try to shy away from this how-to content, um, but this content just had to be made on my channel. It, I had to make this content. Um, so, yeah, i see you guys in part two of the video. Um, if it looked like I had one of the same clothes, I most likely had one of the same clothes because I sprayed it down and the engine dried enough for me to put the engine back together. So don't think I'm out here being a dirt ball. I might just be a dirt ball. I don't know. Who knows anymore? So, yeah, guys. Um, yeah, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys on, I guess, episode or part two of the timing belt job. Cool.